I just finished installing these MCTUNE rock lights on my 5th Gen 4Runner. I'm going to walk you through how I did it. A project I've been looking forward to completing at this spring was installing rock lights on the 4Runner. MCTUNE was nice enough to send me these C2 RGB rock lights. I'm going to walk you through everything that's included in this kit as well as detailed instructions on how to install them. All right, let's take a look at everything that's included in the C2 rock light kit, starting with the lights themselves. I'm going to be mounting eight of these on my 4Runner today. Um, you know, for what I would consider a relatively inexpensive rock light kit, I'm pretty impressed with the build quality of these lights. I'm excited to see how they hold up over the course of the summer, especially um, moving into next winter. Uh, another thing that's going to be mounted to those lights is this shock mount. So this is a nice rubber mount um, that you kind of connect to the lights and then mount that whole system onto your vehicle together. Here's the thing I think that makes these unique is this new inline system control box that they have. So instead of having eight different wires branching out from the control box, uh, you can just keep adding lights to these wires. So you have a wire that goes out for say the driver's side and one that goes out to the passenger side. And then from there you just keep stringing the lights on in a, in a, in a series. And I believe they call this their series lighting system. And then you have your power cord that's gonna be going out to your switch or control panel. And this is Bluetooth as well, so this is what's going to connect to your phone and allow you to control all the LED settings as well as set up your lights and different functions and features. Then we have the actual uh, wires that run from light to light as well as starting off from the control box. They include four with this kit. After kind of figuring out how I wanted to mount these on the car, I realized I wasn't going to have enough of these um, to run from each of the different lights in the way that I want to do it. So I actually went ahead and ordered a couple more. I believe I ordered four more um, cables just to be safe. And, uh, you know, I think take a look at how you want to mount them on and the distance between, and that'll let you know if you need a, a few extra. Um, I think these are like 10 bucks, so no big deal. And then the last thing that comes with this kit is the actual power cord. So this is what is going to be powering the system. Um, you can hook this right into your battery. You know, it has an inline fuse. It also comes with its own switch, which seems like a nice quality switch. I'm going to be installing this a little bit differently. I'm going to be leveraging my Garmin power switch. I'm going to be removing their switch and just tapping these wires right into my Garmin power switch for the power source. So that kind of wraps up everything that's included in the kit itself. Now I want to talk about how I'm going to be mounting this to the vehicle. So I had to kind of come up with my own mounting system and you know I did a lot of research on YouTube and you know there's different ways to do this. I found these relatively inexpensive brackets on Amazon and they already have these nice channels built right into them and they're almost the perfect length for the rock lights. I just needed to grind out about another eighth of an inch and then the rock lights bolt to these just beautifully. So this is how I'm going to be actually mounting these to the vehicle. Um, the way I'm going to be mounting these onto my vehicle is I found this self-tapping drill bit from Milwaukee that allows me to um, create tapped holes in both my rock sliders as well as the frame or other parts of the vehicle that are metal. So I can just bolt these right to the vehicle um, using some stainless steel hardware. So as we move out to the vehicle, uh, the first thing I need to consider is where I'm going to be starting this whole system from and really where am I going to be mounting this control panel. Now I looked all over the inside of my, under my hood and I came up with a great solution as to where exactly I can mount this. I'm going to be leveraging this bolt right here and taking advantage of one of the brackets uh, that I have that I'm going to be using for mounting my lights as well. I'm going to rig up a little system where I'm going to be mounting this control panel right above the horn under the hood of the car. That'll keep it up and out in case I um, encounter any water or weather and it'll also provide a nice clean look and a central location for me to then start branching off um, the inline wiring system. Now when you're considering where you're going to be mounting your rock light, there's kind of a couple different things to think about. What you're going to be actually using them for. A lot of people mount them in the wheel well and you know in each of the corners or right dead center. And what that does basically is it lights up your suspension, lights up the wheel well, but it doesn't light up the trail. So it's really mainly for show. I want this to be more of a functional um, system as far as the lights go. So I'm actually going to be drilling a hole into this bracket that attaches to my low pro bumper 
and mounting my bracket here on the front. And what that'll do is shine a nice amount of light right down on the surface and around that front tire. And then directly behind that, taking advantage of the rock sliders, I'll be drilling a hole right here into this steel as well and tapping that and mounting my bracket. And as we move around to the back, I'll be doing the same thing on the rock slider right in front of the rear tire in this area here. And then again, underneath the vehicle in the far back, I've actually started in here and in the frame itself, I've tapped a hole. You can see there's a bolt in there right now. That is where I'm going to mount in the rear bracket. And I wanted to make sure I was clear of the spare tire where that comes up. And this is just seems to be a really great spot. All right, we're going to go get started. All right, so here's the setup I came up with with my brackets. And I'm just going to show you how to assemble this. So first take your light, obviously attach it to your shock mount. And then these provided bolts slide through both of those. And you can see it still has quite a bit of bolt coming out the other side to attach to some kind of a bracket. So then I take my bracket and you can see how perfect that channel in the bracket fits. It just goes edge to edge. So I did have to grind out about another eighth inch on this bracket like I mentioned earlier. Um, and then just hit it with some truck bed liner paint and it was good to go. And it looks nice and factory. So from there, they don't provide lock nuts or lock washers. So I'm going to actually for the final install be putting on Loctite just to make sure these don't come loose. But using these fender washers and these nuts, we will finish up mounting this onto the bracket. And then from there, how we're going to be mounting that on the truck, like I mentioned, we're going to be tapping holes into the rock sliders and um, different parts of the truck and using the stainless steel bolt lock washer and regular washer, just mount that right into the vehicle. So I'm going to get the control box ready to mount. Um, I'm going to be using one of these brackets like I mentioned, and I'm just going to simply be bolting it to one side of this control box. So again, leveraging their provided hardware, I'm going to take these two bolts and I have these stainless steel, a little bit thicker washers, these fender washers. And then I'm going to be applying just a little bit of Loctite to this because again, there is no lock nuts or lock washers provided with this. So that should do the job and then simply just tighten down these bolts. And there you have it. My control box is now mounted to the uh, angle iron mount. This will run out to one side of the vehicle. This will run out to the other side. And then here's my power wire. This is ready to install under the vehicle. Now I'm going to be getting this power wire uh, prepped and ready to install. Like I mentioned earlier, we're going to be removing the switch. So I just kind of peeled away here and saw what I was working with. I also only need about 36 to 40 inches of this wire coming from the Garmin power switch. So I'm gonna go ahead and splice this back together after I um, disconnect the switch. I have finished removing the switch, splicing the wires back together, cutting them to length, and then I went ahead and added some nicer ring connectors for my Garmin power switch. We're gonna go ahead and get this installed. All right, so now that we have kind of walked through how we're gonna install this, we're gonna get started. I'm gonna start on one of the rock sliders. Um, this is right behind the front passenger tire, and I'm gonna be mounting it right here. So I'm gonna start with a smaller drill bit and work my way up to the self-tapping drill bit and then I'll be able to bolt on the brackets. All right, now that I have this uh, pilot hole, I can work my way up to the self-tapping drill bit. And then once you start to feel the threads go in, just kind of work it back and forth really slowly. And there you have it. It's a tapped hole. Now I can just bolt right into that. All right, I'm going to go ahead and do the rest of them.
All right, now that we've gone around the entire vehicle and tapped all our holes, we can go ahead and start mounting our brackets. So I just have stainless steel hardware. I have a regular washer. I have a stainless steel uh, lock washer, stainless steel bolt, and basically just going to thread those in. You can see how well that pre-tapped hole works with just that simple drill bit. All right, we're gonna go around the entire vehicle, mount all the brackets, and then we can start installing lights. All right, I have all my brackets mounted around the entire vehicle. So starting with the front, you can see under here on the first rock slider mount, second rock slider mount, and then as we get around to the back of the vehicle, look up underneath, you can see where I have that mounted as well. All right, we're at the point we can start installing rock lights. So we're gonna take our light, pair it up with our kind of shock mount, and then I'm actually gonna put a little bit of Loctite on this bolt. We're gonna start running these up into the bracket. We'll do one at a time. Put on that fender washer, and then the nut. And then we'll go with the second one again. Put some Loctite on here. Fender washer. And the bolts. Then we're just gonna take a Allen wrench and tighten these up. Okay, this first light is in and it is nice and sturdy. We are now gonna go ahead and finish up all the other lights and then we can move to the front, mount the control box and start running wire. I just finished installing all the lights under the vehicle. Now I'm gonna go ahead and get this control panel mounted here under the hood and then run the power cable around to my Garmin power switch. All right, that's nice and sturdy. I'm gonna go ahead and get this wired up. It's time to start wiring up the lights. I'm gonna take this strand of wire, hook it up to the control box, and then run it over and down to my rack lights. This will be on the passenger side, and then I'll be doing the same thing to this rock light on the driver's side. Before we go any further, I'm gonna give this a test. All right, we have power. Everything's working great, cycling through its kind of startup with all the different colors. We're gonna go ahead and wire up the rest of the lights. Now that we're wrapping up the install, we're gonna go ahead, turn on the power, download the MIC tuning app, which has a variety of lighting modes, including single color, jump, fade, you name it. This really allows you to dial in the lighting just the way you want it. That wraps up the installation of these C2 rock lights. I'm really impressed with how this project turned out, how easy they were to install, and I can't wait to get them out on the trail this summer. If you're interested in getting yourself a set, Mictune was nice enough to send me a 15% off discount code that I'm gonna put in the description below. Like, subscribe, I'll see you next time.